Happy Halloween, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And this question comes from Sheldon Moss. I to take the mask off, I can't breathe, and I have to put my glasses on. So this question comes from Sheldon Moss, and it's a long one, and he really says the following in his question. So he's presently working as a junior network engineer, and he has hesitations, anxiety of taking the certification exams, you know, CCNA, CCMP, concerns that he may fail. So he's asking questions on, well, how do I get through that? And what are some of your study habits that you can recommend to some of you guys? So that's a great question. But there's another part here that was also very interesting, and it is something that we've been talking about for many of the episodes on this channel. And one of the questions asked is, on a side note, I have had my senior network engineer and a vendor from Tulare telling me that I am putting too much emphasis on certifications. What are your thoughts on that? So let's go ahead and talk about all of those components. So let me first talk about study habits. And there's a lot of different things about this. But the number one, the most important thing is not really technical. It's more of a personality, more psychology, I guess. But it is being motivated, staying focused, and being committed. You have to put in the work. You have to be in the zone. Focus on accomplishing what you want to do. So I want to be a network engineer, so I would do what is necessary. So I read, I studied, I did labs, well, when I could, all the time. When I was on the bus going to work, because I didn't drive at the time. When I was at lunch, during my breaks, even sometimes, you know, during work, when there was free time. Um, on the weekends, holidays, I studied all the time. That is the example of staying committed and focused to what you want to accomplish. And I've seen a lot of people not do that. And another great example of that is, let's say that you have a technical book, like any book up here on my shelf, okay? Well, you may determine how many pages you want to read a night. This is a great test to really determine if you are truly committed and focused on something. Okay, in this case, networking, wanting to be a network engineer. So if you determine the number of pages in a book that you want to read every night, let's say five pages, that's very, very reasonable. It, could, it will likely be more, but let's just say five pages. Are you able to accomplish that every night? Read five pages and you're taking notes during that time. If you are finding that it is challenging to do that, that is something that you should really kind of stop and analyze. You may want to stop and analyze and go, okay, either I have different priorities in my life, two, maybe networking is not something I find interesting because there's other stuff going on. I have seen people in that particular category. So you got to look at those kind of things, okay? Or maybe that's, there's some other component that you're realizing here. So you want to figure that out, but staying motivated and focused is the key for learning this stuff, going out there, getting the certifications, getting the experience that you need, and not kind of taking a step back and waiting for this to automatically happen. It doesn't work like that. I'm trying to help you guys out. Motivation, focus, and commitment. Follow through on it. If you really, really want it, you will do whatever you need to do to get to that particular goal. Now, since we're talking about certifications, and if you're starting out, you're going to likely go for either your CCENT, that's a good starting point, or your CCNA. It's your choice on which one you prefer to go towards. But really, the CCNA is what you want to obtain starting out. So for that, you want to get the material that is required. So that's what I did. I figured out specifically what was the CCNA material that I wanted to learn. Now, I have to kind of interject a couple of things because when I took my CCNA back in 1998, there were no books that I could read or reference. There weren't really websites that I could reference out there. I really had to kind of, you know, look at the blueprints and recommended outlines that Cisco had on their website at the time. I wish there were books like this, like a lot of them. That just, it just wasn't out there at the time. Very frustrating though. But now there are tons of books, a lot of Cisco Press books. So I would recommend to getting a Cisco Press CCNA book. And you get that and doing what I said first, motivation, 
focus, commitment. You want to focus on covering all of those pages, taking notes, and make sure that you have a good, solid foundation for that material, though. Well, that leads to the other thing, certification training. And this is a particular episode that I did talk about of how people learn called self-learning and classroom learning. So check out that video for more of what I talked about there. But that makes a difference because some people learn better in a classroom environment or some people learn better doing self-learning, basically getting a book, dedicating time and going through the material, taking practice questions, that's what they do. So that's what you can do as well. So you can purchase, if you are a self-learning person, you can get the books, you can get um, study questions that you can purchase from particular sites that are focused on certifications. We have some certification training, but really we have practical training. That is our niche um, on our website. That's the work that I do is practical training. But you want to get a certification type training package and just read um, you know, you know, the books, the material that you buy from this training package, answering these test questions. And that's what you want to do. Now, if you prefer a classroom environment, then sign up for a CCNA bootcamp class one week. That will be more pricey, but if you like that kind of environment of classroom learning, then it's well worth it though. Because then you are in a classroom environment, you're learning through the material, you're asking questions, you're collaborating with other students, if that's the um, format of the class. And that will give you more foundation and more of a comfort that you do know this material, that you're ready to take the exam. The last thing is about test taking, the anxiety. Well, you will always have that anxiety. I took my recertification exam for my CCIE like, like, a year, like a year ago, I think. Almost a year, a year and a half ago, I think it was. I get butterflies in my stomach too, though. But that's just, that's, it's taking a test. We always get anxiety when we're doing something, like when we're going to do a presentation in front of a classroom if we're taking an exam, if we're doing something that's really, really critical or important. We get a little anxiety in our stomach though. But the key thing is just get it done. Could you fail the test? Yes, you could fail the test. Let me tell you something. This is a true story though. I, I haven't told this to a lot of people, but I have gone, I have come really, really far. I'll try to find my old test sheets to, valid, to uh, kind of show you guys if I can find them. When I was preparing for my CCIE, so there's two parts to that. There's the written exam, there's the lab exam. I took the written exam five times. I just kept failing that exam. Because keep in mind, there were no books for me to reference, to read, or websites of training packages to buy. And it was tough. But I, I, but I stayed motivated, focused, and committed. I said, I, I do want the CCIE. I love this field. I'm very good at what I do. I am not going to let this test defeat me. And I passed it on my fifth attempt. Barely though. The passing score was like really, really low at the time, like 60, like 60% or something, something like that. And I got like 60%. I barely passed that exam. And when I took my lab exam, I took that three times. You know, I, you know, I failed it, well, of course, once, two times, and I passed it on my third attempt. And when I took my recertification exam, okay, I took my recertification exam, like I told you guys, like a year and a half ago or something like that. I got 100% on that exam. I got everything correct. Because over, over time, I got comfortable with taking tests. I know the format of how, okay, Cisco is asking these kind of questions. You just know it once you get into the cycle of how these tests are formatted. And it's gonna to happen to you, but you have to get out there, you gotta put in the work, you gotta say, you know what, I'm, take, I'm gonna sign up, I'm gonna take this test, pass or fail, I'm gonna do it. Now, of course, you wanna be prepared. So if you're not prepared, then don't sign up for the test. But if you put in the work, you've done your reading, you answer test questions, you got training material that you have covered completely, take the exam. That is really, really important. Because guess what? If you want to keep progressing up the ladder, the CCMP are like four or five tests that you have to take. Kind of forgot the exact number. Then the CCIE, well, that's a written exam and a lab exam. These tests are going to keep escalating, get more bigger and bigger in scope. So 
it is the time to do it. And if you're prepared, then there's nothing that you should be really be concerned about. And the last part of the question was, don't emphasize too much on certifications. So this was something that the senior network engineer in your company uh, recommended, including a vendor. So do I agree with that? Absolutely. If anything, that has been the running theme in all the videos that I talk about at some level. I talk about that certifications are important, but also the practical experience. Certifications, experience. Certifications, experience. That's what's really important. And you want to emphasize on that. Now, between these two, yes, you want to emphasize more on the experience because that's what's really what companies are looking at. As I said many times before, the certifications really gets your foot into the door. It gets the phone call. It gets the opportunities to begin with. But when you're going to get hired, they're looking at the resume and the experience. That's what's really important. You should emphasize of gaining the experience. And luckily, you are in a position, you are a junior network engineer, and that is fantastic. So that means that you are already gaining the experience that you need. Just take full advantage of that. Gain more experience so that eventually you will become a network engineer and a senior network engineer recommending the same thing to emphasize on experience. Now remember, certifications are also important. You want to get yourself certified because of opportunities and the things that I talked about. But if you want to do your main focus is gaining as much experience as you can and it seems like that you are in the right environment to do so. And we are done with this episode. So Sheldon, thank you very much for the great question. I hope that has helped. But I want to hear from the rest of you guys. So post your questions below in the comments about anything in the networking field or being a network engineer and your question will come up in a future episode on this channel. So please subscribe to this channel. That would mean a lot to us. And check out our practical training that we have on our site at routehub.net. We got a lot of great stuff there. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.